And I believe we should be, yeah. All right, we are recording. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to week three of the FEA session. Um, today we're gonna go over structural buckling uh, and we're gonna have the rest of the time for you guys to work on your projects. Uh, so for you guys record, uh, watching the recording, this will be a relatively shorter recording than uh, modules one and two, uh, but let's get into it. So first here's the attendance. I'm probably just gonna spend about 15, 20 seconds here and I'm gonna move on. Cool, all right. So, I mean, before we get started, I do want to um, just explain why I added buckling uh, stress analysis uh, into sort of our modules here, because uh, during spring and uh, during fall, uh, I like the modules would have ended with what we talked about in week two, which was uh, shape optimization. That would have been the last topic. And then week five would have been your final projects. I'd like you guys to really be more immersed into uh, Fusion's FEA um, options because I don't think that, you know, just having the ability to do uh, static stress analysis and shape optimization for me personally and the comments I've gotten from uh, students in previous semesters, uh, it's not enough. They'd like to learn more from this FEA milestones course, which is why I've sort of, you know, compacted weeks one and two to include what usually would take four weeks to teach uh, and week three and four. So this week and next week, I'm adding in new stuff. So please do bear with me. It seems a bit rough um, if the task seems a bit unstructured or, you know, maybe I'm not explaining things um, too well. Please do bear with me and let me know because this is going to be my first time um, teaching it and I'm making the content as we go. Um, so yeah, so why exactly buckling stress matters? Uh, maybe for, you know, if you're an ECE student, uh, let's say maybe it doesn't matter at all, but say you're in civil engineering, let's say you're in aerospace or um, say you're in mechanical engineering and industrial even, uh, you know, if you have a bar and you, you put some load, some vertical load on the bar, the bar can eventually buckle. And what that means is it can break, right? And it's a, you can think of it like, all right, let's let's see here. Let's say I have this Apple Pencil here as a bar. Now, if I apply a force here, right, there will be a, the, the pencil itself will feel the force. And eventually, when the, when the magnitude of the force is great enough, the pen will buckle or it'll break, right? So basically, Fusion has a tool that could uh, accurately, well, more accurate than, um, just doing a static stress analysis because just a heads up, you guys can do a buckling stress analysis in static stress analysis itself. Uh, the issue with that is it's not as accurate and I'll um, explain why in just a bit. But more than anything, I'd like to also include buckling stress to, you know, if you're a civil engineer or if you're, if you have an interest in civil engineering, this can also apply to you, right? So before we get started, I'm going to ask you guys to open the file I've attached in the email I sent out this morning. It should be called like week three work part or something. Uh, and I'm just going to swipe uh, to the left now to show you my Fusion um, file right now open. So here it is. This is what you should be looking at. And I do want to apologize because I realized I sent out a file with a study already here. And I think you should be able to see my study that I've created as well. So keep that as reference, but I am still gonna go through how to set up a buckling stress analysis step-by-step -step within this lecture. Um, but let's just go to design first. This might be the interface or uh, this might be what you're introduced with once you open the file. Uh, what you wanna do is like static stress analysis, you wanna change your workspace now from design to simulation, which is what we've been using for the past two weeks. So this is nothing new, change it to simulation. Of course, your interface might look a bit different. You might get something like this because you don't have a study yet, let's say maybe. Um, once you have that, I want you to create a new study, but instead of doing static stress analysis, 
um, simplify our shape optimization like we've done in the past two weeks, I'd like you guys to go here actually, structural buckling, right? And in buckling, um, it's very similar to static stress. We just have like a few variables we need to define a bit further. Um, so I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna go back here to the slides. Um, okay. okay, so I'm gonna go along with this with you. Let's create a new study here, and I'm just going to call this, uh, like, let's call it lecture study. Okay, cool. Now we have that, and we go through what we normally would do in a static stress analysis. Again, set the materials, constraints, loads. Um, like I said in uh, our lecture last week, one good way to do things is to go through the tree here, basically. Go through it from left to right. That's a good way to do things. So first, we'd like to define our material. For this, I would like you guys to change your material. Did I? I'm so sorry. I forgot to um, put down in the uh, presentation what I want your material to be. But I would like your material now to be plastic, right? ABS plastic is what I want your material to be. So please change it to that. And click OK, right? And just, just to be sure that you have the right material, click on this drop down here, right? This arrow next to study materials, and it should say ABS plastic, right? If it says that, you're good. That's all I want you to do, right? Um, again, so it should be ABS plastic. We're good there. Once we've done that, we'd like to constrain our bar now, right? Um, and we'd like to fix the bottom of our bar, actually. Fully fix it. Make sure again you have that lock there. Click OK, and you should be good uh, with the constraints. Uh, next, the load. Again, similar to what we've been doing. Like you guys, the force, downwards force of. Let's let's keep it as one, right? One pound, and I'll I'll, I'll let you guys know why I'm using one pound. But as of right now, just trust me, guys. Let's use one pound. All right. So I'm gonna just go here. Cool. Oh, the next thing. Okay, sorry. Before I get going, um, do you have any questions, Solon? No, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Um, so why exactly did I put our uh, load magnitude as one pound? Because I mean, if we think about it, you know, even though it's made out of uh, even though our bar is made out of plastic one pound might not really do anything, right? I mean, um, so the reason why we do that actually is because by using one pound, by applying one pound of force, when we get our results back, we will be, um, we'll see what is known as a buckling load factor. And you'll, you'll see that in, a, in just a bit, but that number is basically the buckling, the magnitude of force it, uh, that is needed for your part to buckle. So if you um, did what I did here, at a magnitude of one force going down, your buckling load factor will simply tell you what force you need to apply in order for your um, buckling load factor to be one, or in other words, for your part to buckle. But before that, there's also a uh, new thing that we have to take into account when we're looking at um, buckling stress analysis. And for this, we're going to go to settings. I'm going to click on that. And here in general, you might see something different now. There's something, it's something here called number of modes, right? We didn't have, we didn't have that in um, our static stress analysis. So what exactly is a mode, right? So here in the presentation, I've sort of gave you, given you sort of um, a quick summary of what it is. Again, we're not doing a, a remote um, load. We're not doing a remote load over here, right? Our force, if you can see, is distributed. That's why there are arrows coming down. And now, ideally, the arrows would go across our entire surface here. But again, that would be too many arrows. So Fusion just gave us five that we can see. But it's basically a distributed load that's pushing our um, pushing our bar down, right? And now 
having more modes will actually allow us to predict the different behaviors um, that our bar can attest to um, based on how the load will be applied, right? So for example, let's say I am going to do this really quick. Okay. Now we know in this bar, weakest point will probably be around a here, right? Because if we just make a cut through, we'll notice that there is the smallest cross section in the center of the circle, right? Now that can be very sensitive based on where exactly we're applying our load. Say we have these five arrows here. If our one pound load is primarily acting on this corner, that might give us a different result than if our load was acting on this corner, right? So basically having a bigger number of, of modes allows, allows you to uh, basically sort of encapsulate uh, the different possibilities of what would happen in your analysis based on uh, the conditions you put on your uh, study, right? But for this, again, we're not doing anything too complicated, anything that requires us to have like a very accurate result. So it is fine for us to keep our number of modes as three, okay? Now, next, we're just gonna hit solve, but don't forget, it's still an FEA analysis, so we still have to create our mesh, right? Let's do that now. Now, um, for this one, I I really don't care. I, I I don't mind if you guys use the most basic mesh. I know I'm using a default mesh, which is in this case, case 8%. So it's fine if you guys wanna turn the slider up to 10%, down to 1%, I don't mind. Um, because again, this is a an optional assignment. You guys don't have to submit this in. Um, I do hope you guys still do stay until the end of the lecture because week five, uh, I will ask you guys to do another personal project, this time on buckling stress analysis or dynamic event simulation, and that will be required. So I do believe it's a good idea to stick around, at least so you understand how buckling um, stress analysis works, right? So again, now I've made my mesh. My pre-check has told me, yep, you're good to go. I'm going to solve. Cool. Now, while waiting for that to solve, I actually have a simulation that's done, right? And it is one that I believe you guys should also have with you because I sent this file um, directly to you guys. And I called this one five modes. I have the results here with me as well, right? I've, I've done them. Uh, I did them before class. And again, I have ABS plastic. Um, all the same, if we wanna take a look at the load here, one pound um, and it's fixed at the bottom, right? Exactly the same, basically. So this is uh, more or less what you guys should get. Uh, based on your mesh, of course, you might get something different, uh, but this is what I got with an 8% mesh. And again, very similar stuff. Um, interface is very similar, but you don't have um, safety factor or um, <clears throat> what's that called? Stress anymore. You only have displacement, right? Um, so here we see the different ways our bar can buckle. For this, I put five modes, not three, because I just want to show you guys um, the difference between um, modes and what would happen, say, if you wanted to pick four or five or even more than five modes, right? So one of the downsides of having more modes um, is, again, your simulation might take longer to solve because you're basically asking Fusion to... Uh, run the buckling stress analysis again and again and again, right? So makes sense why it would take longer. Um, but here I have five, and you can see it's it's all acting very differently, right? All five, my bar is acting strangely. It's it's, I mean, okay, one and two look very similar. We go down to three, go down to four, go down to five, and my bar does not look like it's behaving the way it should be. And that's simply because Fusion is simulating what would happen if the force is applied at different parts of the surface, right? And again, this is, of course, an adjusted. Again, it's a one pound force. So, okay, sorry, I just got um, a chat here. Uh, 
Nick, can you hear me or is, is it still bad? You can give me a thumbs up if you can hear me already. Um, let me take a look at. OK, OK, that's very funny. Um, OK, so this is what you guys should have. Uh, Right now, I I don't know when you came in, Nick, so I'm not sure how much you were able to, to get from that. I might go over it really quickly on how to set up a, uh, a buckling stress analysis. So whom were you able to uh, follow along? Sorry, I, I can't quite uh, hear you. Yeah, yeah I can. I can okay, follow. cool. Cool. May I ask if you um, your simulation is done solving or if it's still in the process of solving? Yeah, it's finished. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna go back to the slides real quick. This is what you guys should see again over here, right? What I showed you guys earlier. You guys should be able to see that. Now, what exactly is that number, right? It's a number times load, right? For every mode, you have a different number here, right? Why is that? That's what we call a buckling load factor. Now, I'm just gonna skip over really quick here. This table basically tells us what will happen to our bar or whatever model we decide to do a buckling stress analysis on. Um, so if our buckling load factor is anywhere above one, we should be good. Buckling will not occur. But if our, buck, if our buckling load factor or BLF is either one or lower than one, then maybe we should um, sort of Take into account, maybe look at our model, um, change the materials, add more material, look at the weak spots basically, right? Because um, anywhere below one or if the BLF is equal to one, that might mean um, buckling will occur. Sorry, so if BLF is smaller than one, buckling will occur for sure. If BLF equal one, then buckling might occur, most likely will, right? And we also have here uh, the explanation of what if my buckling load factor is a negative number, right? What if it's not a positive number as you guys saw in mine, right? Well, don't worry. That doesn't mean you guys are doing things wrong. Um, it just means that there is another behavior that Fusion expects from um, the simulation it ran, right? So I'm gonna go back really quick here. Um, and earlier, what I did, again, was I set the magnitude of force to 1. So if you see here on, on this, these three modes over here, I can now go back to my study and change the buckling, uh, the force I applied, the 60.58 pounds of uh, force. And what I should expect now is for buckling mode 1 to have a buckling load factor of 1. Theoretically, that's what should happen. And um, that's actually what I want you guys to do, right? So what I want you guys to do, I'm gonna go back here real quick, is I want you guys to set up a structural buckling simulation now, not a static stress simulation, um, not a shape optimization, right? I want you to create a structural buckling study here, create study and go through what we'd normally go through when we're doing a static stress simulation, which is first identify what material you want uh, your part to be. In this case, I want that to be an ABS plastic, right? There you go. Once we're done with that, again, constrain our bar, make it fully fixed from the bottom here. Next thing, you want to add a load that pushes down on the bar, on the top surface of the bar, right? If you're doing this for the first time, um, one pound, so you get that buckling load factor, right? I've done this before, and here I'll show you. I've done it in lecture study here, where uh, I have set my force to one pound, and I've gotten my results. So in this case, I'm not going to make it one pound. I'm actually going to change it based on the result I got from my previous study. So here, my lecture study where I put a force of one, mag uh, one pound force here. When I go to results, I can see here my different buckling modes, right? Um, and I do wanna say, sorry, give me a sec here. Yes, please do not worry if your numbers don't match up, match up with mine. Again, like I said before, this could be an issue of meshing or simply 
um, Fusion doing the simulations a bit differently um, for, for some reason, right? If you can see, as long as you're within the range, um, I don't mind. I really won't deduct points. And again, it's optional, so it should be fine. If you want um, an accurate result, I do suggest uh, to make finer meshes or just entirely going away from fusion and going for a uh, for an even more accurate FBA software. But as of right now, we're going to stick with fusion. So here we have a buckling mode of 62.24, right? I'm going to finish results there. Now, um, I'm actually going to change what I said earlier. So the best way for you to solve this right is to instead just clone a study, right? Just clone a study. So I'm going to delete this right here. Once you've cloned the study, right, you have everything that you had in your first study and lecture study here, right? And the only thing I want you guys to change now is this force. Change this one pound force based on the results you got here. So an example, uh, I'd like to, I need to change it to 62.24 now, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here and change my force now to 62. 24. Once I'm good there, I basically solve this study again. And I want you guys to do that three times. And if you guys can submit a screenshot of a safety factor equaling one, that would be perfect. And that's all I want you guys to do. Uh, I'll give you guys about 10 to 15 minutes to do that. Um, the slides should be attached on Slack. So if you if you want to refer to that, please do, because I might stop screen sharing just so I can see the chat. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions, please do let me know and I'll start looking at the chat now. Give me a sec. Let me just stop sharing my screen. Cool. All right, so... Uh, I am just going to go over one more time how to set up a um, buckling stress analysis, right? We're going to go from the beginning. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there you go. We're going to go from the very beginning. So if you guys downloaded the part from, um, from Outlook that I attached on Outlook, um, this is what you guys should be introduced with. Um, Again, change from design to simulation workspace like we've been doing for the past two weeks. So shouldn't be anything too new. And you guys probably won't be met with this interface. You might be met with this one. Again, it's fine. Pick structural buckling because that's the entire point of what we're doing this week. I'm gonna create study here. And again, plain old model. Now we have to sort of define our um, conditions Again, just go along this line over here and you should be good. As long as you go along this line and your pre-check gives you a, um, a check, you should be good. So let's start with material here. Please change it to ABS plastic, right? I'm gonna click that. Now we're gonna add a constraint like we've always um, done. We're gonna fully fix the bottom portion, the bottom surface of our bar. I'm gonna press okay there. Then we're gonna have a structural load here that pushes down on the bar on the entirety of this surface that goes down, we're gonna have a magnitude of one. Why a magnitude of one? Again, we, add, we, we use a magnitude of one because by doing so, when we get our results back, what we'll see is a buckling load factor here in our results. And what this is, is it's basically the force required to make our bar or model buckle, right? And I know we have three different modes, which I'm gonna go over again really quickly. And I know it's, it's hard to understand. Uh, personally, I also have a hard time understanding um, the first time I, I studied this, but basically um, you go here, the settings, and you'll see there's something new. We didn't have number of modes when we did static stress analysis. So what exactly is a mode, right? I mean, you can hover over it, yeah. So Basically, the more modes we have, it's basically just telling Fusion, uh, all right, I'd like to take a look at the different possibilities of my bar bending. Why? Because, again, 
this force I applied at the top here, as you can see, it's a distributed force. It's not a remote force I've applied at a specific coordinate, right? This, although fusion is only showing me five arrows pointing down, in reality, there could be infinite. If I keep zooming in, I might get more and more arrows theoretically because the force is going to be applied to the surface, right? It's not just going to be applied to a point. So it's going to be applied to a surface. And as you can imagine, maybe if we have a our force more concentrated closer to this region, um, our buckling might be a bit different than it is than it would be if our force is mainly concentrated within this corner, right? So a lot of differences there. Um, but that's how you set it up. Again, don't forget to generate your mesh, right? And I said this earlier, I'm going to repeat it again. Doesn't matter what mesh setting you guys choose for this one. I really don't care. Uh, you guys might have um, a bit of a discrepancy with the values you guys you guys might see in the lecture right now. But please don't worry about it. You know, if uh, say instead of having 60.58, you guys get a value of 55 or 56. Um, you guys should you guys should be fine. If it's too big of a difference, please do uh, message me on Slack and we can figure something out. Um, but yeah, you guys basically want to generate your mesh and uh, pre-check's telling me it's all good. Now I can solve. Now I know you guys are probably thinking now, all right, well, that was useful, but you know, I'm not going to stimulate the bar. Maybe um, one functioning um, simulation maybe for buckling stress analysis would be on a table, right? on the legs of our tables, um, would it be able to withstand a certain amount of force? And that's when this tab is required. It's called contacts. Now, if I click on this, it basically tells us solid 0 0.004 inch. It doesn't apply to our study right now, but let's say I have four of these and I have a flat um, rectangular sheet and I create a table there, right? So. In my design workspace, I assemble a table and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like, all right, will um, my table be able to withstand um, my weight if I were to sit on it, right? So how you do that is when you come here, you basically set up uh, your study step by step the same way we did earlier, right? Of course, it might be a bit different in terms of um, constraints because you have to constrain the legs a bit different. Um, but another difference is that you need to put uh, is that you need to put automatic contacts, and this basically tells Fusion, okay, so whatever is within 0 .0, uh, 0 0.004 um, inches of one part is classified as um, in contact with another part, right? So if I have four, imagine I have four of these over here, four of these, um, and they're all sort of um, sticking to the wooden, to the uh, rectangular slab to create a table, right? By clicking generate here, I'm basically telling Fusion, now treat all four legs with that rectangular slab as one body, right? That's basically all I'm saying. But again, we're looking at a very simple bar here. There is no need for us to define our contact. Again, once your study has uh, finished solving, this is sort of what you guys should see. Now, if you click here, you see that there's only displacement. Now we have no more safety factor or stress. That's fine. Uh, if you guys do want to submit this optional homework, um, just send me a screenshot of the displacement. Send me one screenshot of buckling mode one, one screenshot of buckling mode two, and one screenshot of buckling mode three. That's all I need you guys to send me. But again, I'm not going to ask you guys to send me this one specifically. I'm going to ask you guys to send me the results of, oh, I haven't done this yet. Okay, sorry, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Cool, I'm gonna ask you guys to solve for this. Yeah, sorry, for this, all right? That's the assignment for you guys this week. Again, I'm gonna stop sharing again so I can see the chat. I'm gonna ask the people in, here, if they have any questions and how they're doing. Okay. Um, so you guys can give me a thumbs up um, if you guys are good. 
I'd like to know where, where you're at, Song, because I know um, you're probably doing your second, third, and fourth um, studies. How's that going? Is that going okay? Yeah, I'm basically done. Just screenshotting stuff now. Yeah, okay, cool. Sounds good. Thanks, Song. Um, Nicholas, uh, you came in a bit late. Were you able to set up your study well? Um, okay, now? Cool. All right, sounds good. So uh, something that I'm sure you guys have seen the past week is the, um, yes, exactly, the, the Titan Submersible um, that has unfortunately imploded. And um, yeah, so one purpose of fusion um, of FEA actually is for, for some things like this to not happen. Uh, because again, you CAD your submersible you should be able to test your submersible, right? Simulate your submersible on conditions down at the ocean floor, um, close to the Titanic to make sure that, you know, it doesn't implode, right? So I actually um, tried to model it out. So here I've done the best I can to try and make it look at least a little bit like the uh, Titan submersible. I'm gonna share my screen. Here it is, it, it looks, a little bit like the Titan submersible. Um, uh, it doesn't actually, but but it, it resembles it a little bit. So bear with me here. And I'd like to show you guys the power of fusion, even though, you know, fusion might not be um, the most accurate, the best. It's still able to show us basically what could have happened to the Titan submersible, right? Now, just for your information, what I did here is I hollowed out, sorry, let me show you guys this here. This, sorry, okay. Okay, now what I did is I modeled out a submersible. It's quite hollow. I gave a, um, a pretty generous thickness. Um, and I'll show you guys my design in just a bit, but here's basically what I have, right? Oh, that's ugly. Cool, cool. I'm gonna go to my design here. So this is what I made, right? It's basically just um, submarine. I it's just very simple, very simple geometry as you guys can see. Uh, again, look at that inside. It's just a a hollow revolve and a bunch of extrusion. I also put on a base so our submersible doesn't go anywhere and clamps down to hold our submersible in place, right? Now I I I ran some simulations on it and please don't mind the um, exclamation mark. But I also had to do contacts. Why? Because now I'm dealing with because now I'm dealing with um, an assembly, right? So I have to look at my degrees of freedom and make sure they're all fully fixed. Now, why is this important, right? Why? Because if it's free, like let's say our submersible here is free instead of being green or fully fixed, what would happen, right? Any force we apply to our submersible really won't make any change because our submersible is just gonna sort of move according to whatever force we, we place, right? But basically what I did is I applied a load, um, a pressure load that pushes inside, right? And uh, I don't know how accurate it is, but um, in the news, I saw that uh, the submersible might have been uh, exposed to 400 atmospheric pressure. And I, I did half to show you guys to what 200 atmospheric pressure itself can do to a submersible. And again, the materials aren't 100% um, accurate with what materials the submersible was actually um, made of, but I did use titanium, uh, which is kind of similar. I know they had a bit of uh, carbon fiber um, as well, but there wasn't any option in fusion. And of course I could load it in myself, like I thought you guys in week one, make my own material, but uh, I didn't want to go through that much of a hassle just because I don't have the entire de detail of this submersible, right? So, okay, I'm just going to show you guys the results basically. I'm gonna show you guys by animating it. Um, so this is what could have happened to the submersible. Um, 
when it started imploding, right? If you guys can see there, I mean, we can make it deform, um, just play it, right? That could have been what happened to the submersible, which is started imploding, you know, um, caving inwards. So yeah, I mean, I just want to show you guys that, that let you guys know, sort of give you an idea of what fusion can be used for um, besides on the wrench that we've been using for the past few weeks. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing well with your projects. Um, I'll be honest with you, that's all I had prepared for this week um, with regards to buckling. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen for just a bit because I just want to finish up and then I'm going to stop my recording and I'll be able to help out um, students who are here if they have any questions about their personal projects. But now that you've gotten your results, you might be thinking, okay, what do I do now if buckling does occur, right? Like, let's say I, I put my load and my buckling load factor is one, right? Or, or less than one, what do I do now, right? Well, first you'd like to clone, this, clone your study like I did earlier. And there are two approaches, I would say two main approaches that you can go through um, to, to ensure that your model doesn't buckle. Um, one of which is of course to change your material. You were using ABS plastic, which might not be the strongest material. Say if I were to change it to aluminum or steel, I'm sure that the same amount of load, say earlier we had a 62 pound load. We had a 62 pound load on our same model, but now it's made out of aluminum or steel. I'm sure it wouldn't buckle. So again, pick a stronger material. That's one way you guys could um, ensure that your model doesn't buckle. The other way you guys can do it, um, and prevent buckling is to add more material to the model. Now, what do I mean by that, right? What do I mean by what I mean by this is basically just not have a hole. Because now our model will be a lot stronger because physics tells us that in our model here, the weakest part will be right here closest to the center of the circle, because this is where we have the least amount of material, right? So there, uh, when we apply a load on the top surface here, right, this specific part of our model will be um, inducted to a great amount of stress because now it can't distribute it, uh, distribute it um, equally, right? And there's less space to distribute it amongst, right? So again, those are two ways you could strengthen your model and uh, prevent buckling. And then, of course, you want to run it. You're going to run a study on your uh, newly edited or newly changed model to, you know, actually back up your claim. Show that your uh, your model won't buckle um, based on the buckling load factor. Uh, but yeah, that is it. I'm going to leave the submission link up here. Uh, for 30 seconds, so you guys can refer to it when you uh, when you're watching the recording, or um, and I will also post it on Slack, so don't worry about that. But that basically is it, and uh, for the introduction to buckling, I know it's it's I uh, went through it pretty quickly, and there's not really much to do. Um, but this is the first time I'm doing it, so uh, please do let me know. Um, in the feedback section, please let me know uh, what I did well, what I didn't do well in, uh, what you guys expected more out of maybe in a buckling stress um, analysis, uh, as well as what you want me to go over um, maybe for a future session, because that would be very helpful, guys. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing here, and I'm also going to stop recording because from this point forward, I'm just going to be helping uh, the students in the room with uh, any uh, problems they might have or with the personal project uh, from last week. Uh, but thank you, and I will see you guys next week.